Good afternoon. I'll call River Trust meeting to order for Tuesday, October 25th. Uh, any activities from any of our committees? Not that I know of. It. Gary, Kathy? Nope. Thank you. Uh, MAPS 3 subcommittee. Anybody have anything on that? That's right. I guess I do. I've got the agenda here. So I guess I better go there also. Uh, meeting minutes we have of September the 27th are in your packet. Anybody have any corrections or additions? Everything okay on those? Record your vote. Approved unanimously. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to jump around the docket. Gary also is involved with all these MAPS advisory, and his first one's at 1.30, and he would like to attend. And that'd be great. So the one item, and I don't know if there's anybody here going to make a presentation, but on item E, which is preliminary plans and specs, for the canal zone G, I thought if we had anything, we could do it first. Is there anybody, Dennis, you know of? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, Tim Johnson uh, said he would be here. There is no presentation to be made, but he was going to be here to answer Did questions. He, I mean, is there any updated maps or anything? So you know of, you have anything? The last one we saw, you know, there was some discussion about the stairs and the elevators and all of those I elements. I didn't know what they ended up on. All of those elements have been included in the in the brief layout, and there's a set of plans or should be back in the conference room if you wish to look at them in in greater detail. There is one uh, change that you will probably see between these preliminary and the ultimate finals that will come before you, and that is a slight change to allow for a better nose geometry for the uh, turning basin for the, for the uh, watercraft to turn around the Devon boats. But other than that, it's, it uh, is essentially well, they, they as you the, They had the one stairway coming from the east, and then we had the serpentine stairway coming from the west, and then the elevator, if I remember right. That's right. That right? Are those all three, those are still the three elements? And the key piece that, that was added, if you recall, was the the direct staircase right. to get down to the, the level where the boats are. And, and that's not the serpentine, was, in addition to the in serpentine? In addition to, because we needed to make sure that there was a direct route for pedestrians. And that was something that Mr. Johnson's folks did address. And the elevator was going to be bid as an ad alternate. That's that correct. correct. In terms of funding, that was, yeah. because the ramp would fulfill our ADA requirements, the elevator would be desirable but not necessary. And okay. so it will be uh, packaged as an alternate. <clears throat> okay. Well, if Tim gets here, we'll see if there's anything else. But anything you want specific, Gary, you okay on it? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll just hold that. We'll have a. We'll still have a quorum when Gary leaves, so we'll be okay. Uh, consent docket is to uh, receive the sand mining and oil and gas revenue report and the river corridor events update report. Then move and second. Anybody have any questions on either one of those? Record your vote. Approved unanimously. Thank you. Uh, primary agenda items uh, received the unaudited financials uh, ended August 31st. Anybody have any questions or comments on that? Moved, Moved and second. Any questions? Record your vote. It's been approved to receive. <coughs> Received the Oklahoma City Community Foundation, Oklahoma City Community Foundation Charitable Organization Endowment Fund. And this is the fund I think everybody knows, which has to deal basically with the river parade, is what it is. And so it looks like as of June 30, it's 586. I know the market went way down, but it's back up. So I don't, that number is probably pretty close, be my guess. Wouldn't you think, Brian? And this last year, it, we were real proud. We posted a 21.57% return, right. so that was. Yeah. And we've, we've not used any of the funds. They've got a 5%, you know, is what they normally do on endowments. The way we set it up, uh, if for some reason we, the, the trustees that are over this, which I would be one, I think the mayor is the one, and then uh, Nancy Anthony, we could decide to make a, a lump sum distribution out of it if we ever wanted to at some point in time. We just haven't chose to do that. So if we ever come across something that we really feel big about, there is 
possibilities on that. Don't be looking at me like so greedy over here. That, <laughs> boy, you, just, you don't say let up and send the funds. But anyway, the idea is hopefully we'll get that up, you know, maybe a million dollars someday or something, which would be nice. Any other questions or comments on that? We need a motion then to receive that. Then move and second. Please record your vote. Approved unanimously. Thank you. I uh, received the quarterly River Cruise uh, update report, which is item uh, C. Jeannie. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to begin this afternoon with a summary of the Brum Dam incident. On the evening of Tuesday, August 30th, the Oklahoma River Cruises staff received a call from Public Works reporting the failure of one of the dam gates at the Brum Lock. The gate was open and releasing water from the basin. Uh, Hornblower crews were scrambled to move two of the boats from the exchange dock to Meridian Landing. The Devon, Devon Pioneer was left at exchange for a controlled set down in the mud at the, at the dock at exchange. The Pioneer was in the midst of a repair to its port shaft seal and it was deemed not safe to move at that time. Once the boats were relocated, the dam was allowed to open fully and the, our middle basin was drained. The dam was repaired by mid-September and it was a matter of just waiting for sufficient rainfall to refill the basin. This is the Pioneer at the dock, tied and resting on the bottom of the cove at exchange on August 31st. <clears throat> With the basin drained, it was easy to see why we were uh, encountering some difficulty and some prop damage uh, coming in and out of exchange. This is the uh, channel leading into exchange. Once again, the Public Works Department was very quick to respond to remove the fallen riprap and redredge the channel to make it much safer for us to move in and out. We're very, very fortunate to have that quick response from Public Works. By September 21st, the Pioneer was beginning to rise from the mud, and in the early hours of September 22nd, it had begun to float. Divers were brought in to inspect the bottom of the boat, and no significant damage was reported. Scheduled service trips were canceled during the month of September due to the dam failure, and all 226 scheduled runs and three charters were canceled. Sunset and live entertainment cruises and remaining charters were conducted out of Meridian Landing. Year-to-date, total ridership had been up 3% over last year by the end of August. Ridership for September of last year was 1,708 scheduled service riders. With the loss of these riders, year-to-date ridership dropped 16%. However, riders per trip uh, are still strong at 6.81 up 16% from last year. Haunt the River Specialty Cruises began October 14th and continued every Friday and Saturday evening for the rest of October. The final two are this Friday and Saturday night and they have sold out. We've had uh, about a 98% sellout on those six specialty cruises. In addition to that, the specially decorated boat was used for scheduled service runs on Saturdays for families and children. Uh, children were encouraged to wear costumes and were given prizes for, and candy while on the boat. Response to this program is overwhelming. Our Saturday uh, cruises were also very, very strong. Staff will be offering a similar program for public service and specialty holiday cruises in November, December. Normally this time of year we cease the sunset cruises, but since they have been additionally selling out, which was a surprise to us, having offered Haunt the River those same Friday and Saturday evenings, we still managed to sell out sunset cruises. So we had a very busy schedule in, in September. Uh, we'll have um, fall cruises, we'll have uh, Christmas cruises in November and December, and then we'll have our specially decorated boat. Of course, all three boats will be decorated for the holiday parade, and then our Saturday cruises for uh, families will be on the decorated boat. Children will be able to write letters to Santa, <coughs> and put them in a special mailbox on the boat. And with that, uh, if you have any questions, that's what I have for you Are today. Are you happy with the bookings for the holiday season? Are they coming in equal to last year, better or worse? What? They're, they're, coming in, they're coming in well. It's not a significant increase uh, that we're seeing, but we are getting a good response. If, 
been pretty busy the last couple of years, and I mean, so you probably can't do a whole lot more, but a few more would be nice. A few more would be nice. Yeah. Okay. Good. Anybody have any questions, Jeannie? I need a motion then to receive the report. Second. Then move and second. Court your vote. It's approved unanimously. Uh, next item is item D is approved design and construction of a playground in the boathouse district to be funded by a grant from Kaboom Foundation and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma. Um, I think this was before it's last month or month before. I can't remember, but uh, we've seen it. So the, is, you gonna make, is somebody going to make a presentation or? I know the siding uh, I, is I between can, the two boat, boat houses. Why don't you kind of go over it real quick? Yeah, the, the siding is between uh, the UCO and OU boat houses. Uh, would be a part of a, a, a pavilion that would eventually be built and proposed by the Boathouse Foundation. Uh, there would be a covered area that would include covering this playground that we're talking about, uh, in addition to some areas for some other uh, classroom type things in an outdoor setting or open air setting. Uh, Mike Knopp is here with the Boathouse Foundation and can provide any additional details on the design, the concept, but the siting has been uh, determined and it is in the packets uh, as we discussed a couple of months ago and uh, and also the the design has been reviewed by uh, Rand Ar uh, Elliott, uh, Elliott and Associates Architects as far as the architectural integrity for the entire Boathouse District. Um, the funding is entirely private. There are no uh, public funds involved uh, and certainly want to express appreciation to uh, Parks, Public Works, uh, Planning, and others in the city who have uh, weighed in and been of assistance in terms of reviewing this. Uh, I think the last uh, review process, there is a building permit pending at this time, and there is a, uh, an administrative review by the Riverfront Design Committee uh, staff in planning, uh, but everything is, is in alignment to, to allow the facility to be installed as, as envisioned. And Mike, if I've left anything out, it, it, it says uh, community build uh, November 12th. Is that when they're going to have a dedication or something? Is that what that is? Yes, this is kind of a unique project. It was brought to us. It's, it's by a national organization called Kaboom. They uh, are providing uh, the organization to put, put this project together and some of the funding. And it's also part, uh, part of the Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, uh, grant that they've provided. But essentially, it is a community build. There's a lot of work in advance that is done, but then about 300 people come out and help, you know, put this uh, together. And it's, again, part of a, a larger scope project that will occur hopefully over the next couple of years. But the idea is it's very health and fitness oriented. It's, it's, it's the playground is very focused on that and, and, and tied to some of our programming. Um, and uh, so it, 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 you know, we feel like there's, there, we are, there is a void out there. Uh, for a place for kids to play, parents to have, you know, small children and involved. And so this will fill that void initially and then it will be expanded upon in the future. So. Will it be lit or any lighting with it? Um, at this point, no, but the, uh, there, there's going to be additional lighting installed, of course, on the river, you know, in, in the next, over the next year, and then additional lights in the parking lot and area. And in, in, in the, I mean, the adjacent project that we're, we have not yet uh, proposed to you, but is in under development. Right. It's, it's a pavilion project, so it's a, it's a step towards that. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, the Boathouse Foundation is going to be responsible for maintaining the playground, and since that is the case, uh, Wendell had some of his staff review the plans and some of the specifications and have made some recommendations. I think to upgrade some of the materials so that it doesn't turn into a maintenance issue for uh, for Mike and his folks. Okay, does that affect anything we're doing here? Or is just that was just no. a comment. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, Larry, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, Wendell. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Well, uh, who's who's picking up the insurance on this in case somebody gets hurt? Out it's there? the boathouse. On the boathouse. Yes. So our hands are out of this. City. Thank you. To answer your question, uh, no, sir, it doesn't affect your vote today because uh, the, the item suggests that your vote include uh, 
uh, a stipulation that the city engineer be the final approval of the of the design that it be approved by the city engineer before it's built so he'll have his his chance to input and of course I have already okay but the 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 motion we have or the information we have now says approve the design so that design is covered everything that you were talking about so, so we're okay or do we need to have an amendment on it Okay, it says subject prior crew. Okay, yes, thank sir. you. I got it. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, okay, we need a uh, motion then to approve the, the design construction. Then move. Anybody have additional questions? Board your vote. It's approved unanimously. Um, uh, Tim, we kind of we got ahead of you before you got here because uh, Gary had to leave. Uh, and I didn't know if you had any presentation on the on the specifications. And I, I guess the only thing I'd ask, uh, I think, ask Pat, is there anything changed from when we originally uh, saw the review? Uh, no, the presentation that I gave you before is still intact. Uh, we have run into some budget issues, so we're looking at some alternatives on the bidding. Uh, you know, brick pavers versus concrete, things like that. Um, and so we're. You know, we're at 90. Is the only alternate, is it only alternate the elevator or are there other alternates? No, there'll be, probably be a couple other alternates. Currently it's the elevator and stairs and there'll probably be some pavement alternatives uh, just to make sure we get down because uh, Parks is very concerned about staying in their budget. And then we may do an, a lighting alternate to, uh, okay. because of some of the LED lights that we were proposing uh, are very expensive. And so we may come back with some, leave the LEDs where they show and do some alternative lighting in other places. And that's our electrical consultants working on that right now. And when do we think we'll get bids in on this? We anticipate these final plans to be wrapped up in a couple weeks. At then the most. go out for what's normal time for bids, month? It'll need to be advertised for 21 days. Right. Okay. Probably anticipate taking bids right after the first of the year because okay. of the holidays. But so we should be looking at this after the first? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, in, in, thank you, Tim. Anybody else have any questions on this? Need a motion then to approve? Is there a, may I move and second? Record your vote. It's approved unanimously. Uh, next is the uh, approve the calendar for next year. And I assume this matches with, well, council meeting. This would, would go for the every other meetings for the summer. That's I assume that's the timing of those. Yeah. And upon further notice, we'll uh, we'll assume these is right until we change them. So it's it's a start anyway. Is that right? Move, yeah. Okay. Been moved. Is there a second? Okay. Been moved. And second. Discussion. Court your vote. Approved unanimously. Claims uh, docket. Anybody have any questions on that? Need a motion, please. So second, move and second, record your vote, approve unanimously. Uh, comments by staff, uh, anything uh, on your report you want to highlight, uh, Pat, particularly? Uh, the, the reports in your packet and actually the most significant items in here have been items on your agenda today. So if there are no questions, I uh, would simply uh, request that the report be received as submitted. Uh, let me just ask a question. On the, they said the architect for the University of Oklahoma has been selected. What kind of timing do you think they're looking at on construction or anything? Did they have that, even said that? They have not determined a construction date. The, the architect on the boathouse has been engaged and then put on hold and, in, and re-engaged. But uh, more recently, within the last 30 days, the university has directed the architect to proceed uh, with the planning process. Uh, but the university has not yet provided a time frame for construction. you have a feel for that, Mike? Have you? Any of that any feel for timing or uh, next couple of years? You think? Yes, I do believe there. We've had I've had meetings with the uh, athletic department. There is a they have a, lot, a very fast growing program. Currently, they're rowing out of Exchange Boathouse, and the facilities are really not adequate at this point to support them. So there is an urgency to to move the project. We're going to be working with them on a, on a more defined time frame in the next couple of months. So. 
Okay. Hopefully we'll have Good. more news soon. Good. Anybody have any questions on the patch report? Need a motion then to receive. Been moved and seconded for development. It's approved unanimously. Thank you. Uh, any comments, trustees? Yep. Don? Just like to make the trust aware that Dan Batchelor with American Indian Cultural Center has asked me to serve um, on a committee to evaluate possible retail uses in there, and he wanted that interchange between Riverfront and uh, American Cultural Center. So just wanted everybody to be aware of that. Yeah, I think it's, it's a good deal. Don had talked to me about it last month, and I couldn't see any conflict at all, so I was happy happy to oblige that. Anything else? Anybody else? You know, citizens? Anybody? Anything to say? We're adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>